In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Enkindle our heart with the fire of your Holy Spirit. We ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. <clears throat> Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to this uh, course, Reading and Studying St. John of the Cross. This is uh, number um, video number five of this uh, fourth series studying and read, reading and studying a Santa Font Common book three. We were talking the last time about the first movements. Uh, we were talking about, uh, we were reading and trying to understand what St. John of the Cross says about the person who is united to God and how the Holy Spirit is, we are trying to understand how the Holy Spirit uh, moves uh, this uh, person, which is quite challenging because we have um, two extremes in different directions also, not only the extremes, but we have inside of the central one, the more balanced one, we have uh, levels of depth. Um, we have the one where we can see the human being as uh, a puppet in the hands of a puppeteer and God would be the puppeteer and the, the, uh, the union would, would mean in this case a complete absence of free will and decision so we are totally guided so forget about the human being uh, which of course this is wrong so this is one extreme the other extreme would be uh, yeah we still have our freedom we can sin or we can do this we can do that and then in the i would say in the in the middle which is uh, what we're trying to see how <clears throat> the human being and god um, in, interact how god is the leader but being the leader doesn't mean that uh, our freedom disappears remember uh, i i sometimes take the example of the dance uh, when you see two dancers dancing, uh, I would say a classic dance or a ballet or something, it's very beautiful to watch. You have the impression that uh, the ballerina um, is uh, very light and there is um, it's effortless, uh, etc. Uh, um, uh, the way that she's uh, dancing or uh, moving in the hands of the uh, the, uh, the the gentleman the, the you have the impression that he is um, um, he's totally in control etc while in fact it's it's a perfection uh, of uh, being docile and transformed it's, it's a result of exercise of uh, many many uh, months and years of exercise so we need to add to this uh, uh, also another aspect which is the transformation and the movement, how the fire of the Holy Spirit can move um, uh, the, 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 the human being. And this, we will be able to perceive it much better when we will be studying spiritual canticles, especially toward the end, and mostly uh, living flame. This, with the living flame, you enter in a completely different world. I mean, if you consider, if you really want to study St. John of the Cross, if you really want to know St. John of the Cross, you have to be patient until you reach the living flame, because it, then you understand John of the Cross. Then you really see the value of St. John of the Cross, because he describes a state of a fiery state um, in the human being, and uh, it's something of another world. But he says it's 
it's it's possible here on earth. This is why Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, um, I would say, calls him the Doctor of Love, because she read spiritual canticle and living flame and she uh, prayed and asked the lord to realize what she is uh, reading uh, deep in her so this is uh, i would say when the flame of the holy spirit in the human being the human being transformed like a log transformed by the fire you can hardly distinguish between the log and the fire and then suddenly the fire is so intense that it starts to uh, sparkle to send uh, flames um, in the air where well, you know when you when you see a big fire you see flames uh, leaving and this movement of uh, sending flames or sparkles or flares um, is is incredibly is incredible uh, and is described by St. John of the Cross as the core of what is happening at this uh, stage so we need to take all this into consideration uh, but I think um, now uh, you have some questions uh, to ask regarding our last uh, lesson. Uh, this is lesson five, uh, uh, four, uh, for the series four, and it's lesson five, video uh, five. So uh, who would like to start? Maybe, um, yeah, in the order, the same order we talked about uh, the questions. Uh, Matthew, if you want to grab your mic and um, and and go ahead. I think in a way, hi, you already answered um, the question in a way. You said we were between these two extremes. And when you mentioned St. Teresa of Avila in her seventh mansion, mentioning Solomon, he would then be, I guess, in that, in one extreme where he has enough free will to, you know, to to answer a temptation in a way that was against you know, these first motions of God. Um, because otherwise, how would you explain, you know, someone, if Solomon was considered to be a soul in union with God, then every first motion being in God, at what point would you then turn away from God, right? There must yeah. be either a strong temptation or a real weakness or, or something that uh, would lead one astray, no? Yeah, please allow me just two things. Uh, first, uh, uh, when I said the extremes, it was the, um, I, I am in the context of trying to understand the interaction between God and the human being. Yeah. So it's neither the uh, a puppet and a puppeteer, puppeteer and a puppet, God uh, mm -hmm. us, and nor a sort of, uh, you know, God is where he is. I am where I am. I, I might be united, yes, but still I'm I'm here on earth and I and I, I'm 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 sort of so this is a this a wrong description of what union is. So uh -huh. when then you ask the question, if we are in, in the right state of union, uh -huh. now in the case of Solomon or other persons, any person, uh how can we explain? Now I think. An important element is to understand that there are different elements. Uh, as I just mentioned, the 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 union with God is is uh, is a, is in a very important stage, preceded by a hugely important stage, which is the end of purification, which marks really a, a, a great change, plus the visits of the Holy Spirit plus this union, and I would say the celebration of this union. Now, it is important to know that spiritual growth doesn't stop with union. It's, it is multiplied when you have union. So it is possible that the person would stop focusing on the inner exercises and the exterior exercises. Let us take the example of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. Let us say that, I don't know, this is me talking uh, like this, uh, maybe around the year 95, she's, she reached union with God, maybe. But then you still have the discovery of an important, uh, through the important grace of the act of oblation. So the union becomes more fiery 
and the fire starts to flame. Now, to answer your question, how can we explain? I'm not saying this is the only explanation, be careful. But I'm saying that it is possible that the person stops paying attention out of ignorance, out of lack of guidance, a lack of finding the true uh, food. And we are immensely grateful to God to have John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, St. Therese, to show us what could be done in the state of union. Inside of it, you have infinite growth. So this infinite growth could not be seen this is a possibility. I'm not saying that's the only explanation. So therefore, you, you move into a lukewarm life. Uh, strangely, strangely. Because union doesn't mean lack of responsibility. It means growth of responsibility. Like marriage, no? Let us take the example of marriage. Marriage is at the end of a, 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 a part of our life, which is... We met, we uh, fell in love, we uh, felt that we can, uh, we are called to, to live together, to, to have a common project, uh, have common ideas and common goals and so forth, and we are happy together. Then we reach marriage. But marriage is a starting point of a new, completely new life. So the question, your question is like, are they married? So where is the danger? They love each other and now they live together. So where is the danger <laughs> the danger is all the time because you you can you can be married but stop loving stop being patient stop knowing exactly what you want stop waiting for the others uh, for the other sorry uh you know who can stop you this this beautiful union can, is 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 um is um exposed to different, uh, to life, to temptations. So the fire of love can sort of disappear. And often, unfortunately, it happens. Why? Because we are not guided. We don't know what to do uh, uh, in order together, because one can know, the other one doesn't know. But together, which is very challenging, because where is this couple where both of them know exactly uh, despite our weakness, of course, because we, we, can, we can fail at any time. Uh, so <clears throat> I think the, the example of marriage t talks a lot. No? But yes, you have union, you have no obstacles, they live together. No? In, in classic terms, uh, marriage means you start to live together. I know today is a bit of a uh, uh, different, uh, different uh, reality in, 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 in the Western world. But you see, so yes, fabulous, they are together, but then they can be, be you know, you can, you reach po point of born, boredom, eh? boredom, uh, lack of, uh, lack of aim. And therefore, we don't think that growth is possible. We, we could get sidetracked by work, by um, not hugely important goals, maybe material goals, but not hugely important. Uh, the, the kids, uh, the, the, this is a big thing. Uh, and then you 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 forget that you you have to contribute into the fire of love, that passion should increase. Uh, we think uh, passion should decrease, while in fact passion should increase. I'm not talking about physical passion. I'm talking about deep passion, a commitment. Uh, it is a completely different thing. So I think here is a little bit your answer. The person can reach union after a huge effort, but then maybe lack of clarity, lack of guidance, a lack of knowledge. Uh, as I said, you have, you have um, indications in St. John of the Cross. I did mention in the last lesson, all the inner uh, acts of love uh, and the outer uh, acts of love. Um, and um, uh, you know the time you spend with God and so forth. Uh, you can reach a point where you start of uh, diminishing, 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 diminishing. So you are weakening the fire and therefore temptations are possible. Of course, of course, temptations are possible. Now, this is why Teresa of Avila, when she, the, these four chapters of the um, 
seven mansions are a masterpiece. Just the the the, the interior castle is a masterpiece, but the seven the the seven mansions, the four chapters, are in themselves a masterpiece. Uh, it's for I, you're never bored rereading them and rereading. It's true that it's Teresa of Avila, so she she could jump from one thing to the other, but it's like perfection. Uh, and one of the main subjects in the seven mentions is what is she is indicating the way. She says, "Why do you think the Lord is giving you such grace? What is He expecting from you? You see." So, as I said, to maintain the fire, to increase the fire, uh, the acts, as she says, obras, no? Uh, what is obras? Uh, works. Uh, uh, we might think it's uh, maybe uh, ministry or, or evangelization or something. but And then you have the incredible lights coming from John of the Cross, explaining that you don't have necessarily to move things, but... It can increase. And then you have St. Therese of the Child Jesus, who is, I would say, the perfect the perfect uh, um, image of, of this teaching of John of the Cross and Therese of Avila, uh, where you see that uh, she, she, um, she keeps this fire, increases the fire, uh, even to a point where she says it's, it becomes very painful uh, when she talks about her retreat, Manuscript B. She says, my desires... Uh, were, were making me suffer martyrdom because I wanted to find what God wants from me. Still, paradoxically, even though she's united, of course, she doesn't, she is in, in Therese, you don't have these stages and so forth. She goes through them, but it's, they're not, they're not the point of attention for her. Uh, but she says, I'm still searching for my vocation and, and it's, it's creating a lot of uh, suffering for me and finally she says i find the answer i found the answer manuscript b no i will uh, i understood that without love the martyrs will not suffer without love the the people who evangelize will not evangelize and and so forth so now i will become this love uh, in, in, in the church you know this is her own discovery but we we are called to 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 make it ours in, in a way, uh, because I do believe that uh, her way and, and, and St. John of the Cross is for, for, for everybody. So <clears throat> not maintaining the fire, <clears throat> not knowing how to feed that fire could lead, of course, to uh, uh, um, paradoxically a lukewarm life because we're not puppets. Even if we are united to God, even if the access to God is direct and immediate but because this is one of the main aspects of union no how can you define union i say oh this is a constant difficulty you know how do you describe union in a, almost in a practical way but one of the aspects which is rarely mentioned but i think is very important is this direct access to jesus you know sometimes when you pray you have the impression that jesus is beyond beyond the clouds and you can't he doesn't hear you etc but <clears throat> i would say that one of the characteristics, main characteristics of union is this direct access. He's here. You see, you don't, you don't need to travel. Uh, uh, you will say, yeah, but for everybody is here. Yes, fine. But in a greater ease, in a more direct access. So <clears throat> are we using this? Uh, did we learn? Are we, uh, are we learning how to use this? So you see, it's part. But be careful. You have... Elements that are not mentioned by John of the Cross directly. Um, he's not taking time to explain them. Uh, you have, you can have psychological ailments, problems, or difficulties uh, present, uh, which could affect the journey of the person. You can have um, certain difficulties, certain uh, old. Uh, old sins or old addictions that are not anymore addictions but they are still there it's a it's a weakness uh it's a, like saint paul himself you know i prayed the lord for three times to remove this spine from my thigh and he said no <clears throat> uh, let um my 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 power or my grace my grace dwells in in your weakness uh but sometimes the weakness could could sort of 
in case of Solomon, you know, the weakness is 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 dragging him away. Uh, uh, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, she she talks about it very easy, very frankly. Uh, she says, in the sense, if I wasn't, if I were, if I weren't in a in a, in a monastery, uh, I'm so weak, I could have ended up um, being, a, um, um, you know, um, having a, you know. A bad life, you know, um, uh, being a sinner, uh, if you if you prefer, she says it. It's not me. Uh, so, and remember that the weakness is more exposed. So here is the paradox: we are lighter in the hands of God, but the, the price of being lighter is having the weaknesses um, exposed. So, if if there is no protection from God, uh, I'm quoting Therese, then she can end up not average, but uh, completely the other the other side. So yeah, so uh, psychological uh, difficulties could also uh, play um, a role in, in in the story. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, okay. So uh, is that is that okay? Okay, thank you. Um, another question. I think um, it it's uh, Francesca. Yes, uh, please. Uh, yes, um, I was wondering um, when the person, uh, as Saint John of the Cross said, is united to God, then when they're going about their own business. A memory might occur of something that they should do or whatever and i was thought that that was more a question of conscience um than of the holy spirit acting although you know conscience is the voice of god so i wanted sort of how to um, distinguish if you like between the two mm. Is it the conscience of the person or is it the Holy Spirit? And why should, why can't we just unite them in the sense that the more you, you are saying your starting point is, let us say that this person is united with God. Yes. Who needs to be united with God? United with God, uh, spiritual marriage, if you want, union with Jesus, means, <clears throat> means that there is a journey before that, a long journey of transformation, where the conscience of the person is transformed by God himself. Remember that um, in the Catholic uh, teaching, the Catholic doctrine, general doctrine, the catechism and so forth, it is said that we need not only to listen to our conscience, but also to allow God to shape our conscience. This is what we call to be informed, if you want, right? to be to be uh, catechized or to receive the, the Catholic doctrine. But I think it goes much further than that. Uh, I think I'm, I'm personally convinced uh, that uh, the more we listen to Jesus, the more we are transformed by his word, the more he shapes our conscience. So in this sense, our conscience itself is divinized. Our conscience itself becomes much more docile to the action of the Holy Spirit. Now, take, for example, the case of a person who very humbly and uh, fervently uh, wants to listen to, to Jesus every day through the scriptures, uh, wants to know his will and is willing with all his or her energy to listen to his indications um, i'm talking about lex Divina. now <clears throat> every word received yeah, every day we the person receives a light receives a word receives a message which uh, in a supernatural way shapes the conscience in a in a new way so it's light upon light the conscience of the human being is illumined day after day and remember also that the examination of conscience, the proper one, should be made under the action of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because 
I can't rely only on my own light, on my own judgment. I could be either too harsh or too lax or too like open. I need the the uh, uh, light or the information coming from the one whom I offended, God Himself. Confession, which is a consequence of uh, the examination of conscience, um, is a reconciliation with the one we offended. So in order to reconcile, I need to know what offended him, not according, yes, according to what I did, according to what I know, but also I need my conscience to be shaped by uh, the one who guides my life, who is the core of my life and so forth. And I need to learn his will every day. So <clears throat> the... Um, being docile to the Holy Spirit, which is the life of a, of this person, you, know, you talk about a person united with, with God, <clears throat> this presence of the Holy Spirit is, is, is a presence in the conscience of the, of the person. This is why I said initially, why do you want to say either the conscience or the Holy Spirit? The conscience is transformed and the conscience has the Holy Spirit constantly there dwelling. Why do you want the Holy Spirit to come only during examination of conscience and then say bye-bye and go? Uh, Father Maria Eugène used to say, take the Holy Spirit as your friend, your constant friend. Live with him all the time. And I think that the more we practice listening to Jesus and doing his, uh, his uh, by the, Holy, the help of the Holy Spirit, being, doing his will, we are transformed, but also we, we live more and always more and more with the, under the action of the Holy Spirit, under the presence of the Holy Spirit. So you reach a point where the Holy Spirit is, is has constant access to this person. So why do you want, from the point of view of the person, the person is aware of not, that's, this is a completely different deal. Uh, this is a completely different discussion. But we are now, it's like you go to the mechanic, you open the boot and you see the engine. So this is what we are doing. We, we open the boot and we look at the engine. Uh, how, how does it work inside? But when you drive, do you think about the engine? A little bit, yeah. You should listen a little bit to the sound of the engine because if there is something wrong, <laughs> you need to be, pay attention. But in general, you pay attention to the road. You pay attention to what you are supposed to do. So be careful because... So John of the Cross is a little bit like the mechanic. Uh, he, he, he lifts up the boot and he shows us what is happening inside. But normal life um, is not the boot open. It's the boot closed and we are, we are driving. So uh, we need to be grateful to the mechanic because he showed us the engineering of how it works. Fabulous. It's very helpful for the spiritual director. But in the end of the day, if you have to do it, means close the boot and drive. So... Uh, <clears throat> You need to understand that from the, our perspective, when we go, th go for it and do it, um, being aware, oh, this is the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is not the Holy Spirit. I, I would even say that we need to be very careful and prudent here, because if we start to canonize everything as coming from the Holy Spirit, then, then this is the best recipe for a disaster. And there are people. There are people who are convinced that uh, what they say, what they do, comes from the Holy Spirit. Well, poor Jesus. Yeah, poor Jesus, because he, 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 can't, he can't place a word. It's like you are married with somebody and you can't place a word. So uh, there's, there's no worse case than this, no? Thinking that all what you do or all you think comes from the Holy Spirit, well... Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a disaster you want it to be you're searching for the holy spirit but to have this this sort of a very hidden pride like thinking oh what i do what i'm doing is coming from the holy spirit my lord i don't know i i, I don't know i find it very difficult to accept uh, it's it's dangerous it's dangerous and there are people there are sadly there are people who are like that so Remember always this advice given by Father Louis. Of course, it was an advice given to me, but I, I share it. He said to me one day, you'll be dealing 
with persons, I mean, oh, you know, he worked with Carmelite nuns and so forth, so the, the persons were rather this type of person, who are very much united with the Lord, like, as you said, union, united with God. And he said, they don't know it. And you're not supposed to say it. Just give the right advice, support the person, help the person, but you're not supposed to say anything else to the person. Because that's... How will it help you? The advice, yes. Do this, do, do that. Read this passage, read that. But what's the what's the goal? I don't know. If you find a goal, tell me. But I don't find any 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 use of, of knowing. And, and, and that was surprising because you think when you are a, a small, uh, you know, a small lad, as we say in the, in the UK, uh, and you are hearing a master saying to you, uh, one day <clears throat> uh, you you will be uh, having this, you think, oh, I thought union, you feel it. I thought union, you'd know it. Well, uh, well he was saying the exact opposite. He said, no. And uh, he reads St. Therese of the Child Jesus. Is it her first worry? I want to know. Yes, she said, I want to know if I'm not sinning. That was important for her. She didn't want to offend God. So that was something for her. But apart from that, she didn't say, am I united? I'm not united. Of course, she she lived with it. I mean, she wanted it. Uh, let me show you something. It's a beautiful uh, poem she composes. It's not the only one, by the way. It's not necessarily the one you will like, but I'm just showing you uh, a, a poem that she, she wrote. Here it is. Uh, it's called, it's poem uh, 17, and it's called Live on Love. Uh, pff, I don't know what is Live on Love, it's English. Uh, in, in French is, as I mentioned, uh, Vivre d'amour. Uh, the D is very important here. Uh, to live out of love. Uh, vivre d'amour means uh, my fuel is love. My fuel, what the the combustible uh, uh, petrol or, or 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 diesel that I put in my engine, is love. So, uh, is she talking about union as John of the Cross talks? She wrote, she she read John of the Cross, and she said, "I want to be like this." But read this poem. I can send you the link. I can put it under the video. Um, it's not hugely long. Uh, it's fifteen stanzas. Um, she has poems a bit longer sometimes, um, and she's describing her state. Uh, when are we? We are in uh, sometime in ninety four, if I'm not wrong. Uh, <clears throat> no, sorry, February ninety five. February ninety five. Um, she composed it very easily, despite the fact that you know she has to do various things. And but she, it describes her state. She is more or less in this state now, um, maybe slightly before union or during union, and see what she says, how, uh, to which extent she's obsessed uh, 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 by God. But is she asking the, the questions, is it me, is it my conscience? Uh, no, I, um, I don't think she, she, she goes there, okay? Thank you. Is that okay? Good. Respect. Thank you. Thank you for your questions because it, 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 they helped me uh, maybe explain uh, certain things that um, uh, wouldn't uh, cross my mind. Or uh... thank you, Francesca. I think we had also another question. Um, <clears throat> it's Hilda, I think. Hello, Hilda. Uh, I think my question. I think my question may be similar to Marge's. No. Mm. As in, like when a person is united with God, then his uh, Saint John of the Cross says that the, his first motion will be inclined to God. So I'm just saying, I'm just thinking, does it mean then he will not, he will always act right and never react in the wrong way? Mm. Um, but I suppose there is the will as well, his own will as well. Let me 
Thank you for your question. Let me, let me challenge you a little bit in the sense that the wrong way, the right way. What is the wrong way and what is the right way? And inside of the right way, do we have the heart of the right way? Um, let me I'll give you an example. No, uh, somebody hits me. Um, if if I am in, in State of Union, I, I imagine that uh, my first reaction won't be just to uh, hit back, no, punch back. Uh, it would be something different. But in this field of something different, you have degrees of holiness. Uh, you might not kick back, you might say a gentle world, a word, you might silently pray for this person. You might silently elevate this person in a mysterious way by a certain type of prayer. So you see, you reacted well, you didn't punch back, you were patient, which is already a lot. So we don't have the first movement here appearing. But inside of that reaction, you have an entire world. This is why I insist, please, please, and not for you, I mean, I'm talking in general, no? Please, 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 when you think union with Jesus, think that an immense horizon opens and that the growth is limitless because it's a growth in love. It's a growth in fire. It's a growth in it's a divinization you see so and add to that that you have the external behavior and you have the internal behavior and this distinction is fundamental in spiritual life you have the inner world is much bigger and much more important than the exterior world while a normal person so a person who's not really into these things, normal, quote unquote, the external world is much more important because your daily life has all the importance. You have to work, you have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to, uh, you get tired, you get this, you get that. So uh, the, the, the reality, the outside reality is what matters. But the more you enter in spiritual life, the more you discover that the center of gravity uh, of your being is inside and that inside is an infinite world which opens inside so and the contemporary uh, simultaneously the exterior world shrinks shrinks in importance shrinks in value shrinks in weight shrinks in worry you see what i'm trying to say so your, your presence becomes more uh, inside. So y y we forget this. We say, yes, union with God, and we continue to project union on uh, a, a normal daily life. While in fact, uh, the journey which precedes union is a journey where this uh, inner cave or inner world, inner garden uh, opens, opens and opens and opens. And, and it's infinite this side, not that side. You see, when you read the, uh, it's beautiful. Now we have now telescopes which are placed uh, on the edge of the uh, solar system and so forth. Uh, if, I hope I'm not wrong. Um, the James Webb uh, um, 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 telescope and so forth. And we start to see certain things and so forth. So, you know, and you have all sorts of theories. Uh, uh, what is the size of the, the, the dark matter and... Uh, the, 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 the black hole, dark holes and so forth and um, we admire I would say the infinite uh, it, it presented in front of our eyes we have millions of uh, billions of years uh, light, uh, light years in front of us and this is like incredible distances so it's almost 
uh, uh, getting closer to the infinite. So this is our world. We look outside, but we forget that to be astronomers of the inner world and to discover the infinite, which is inside. And in fact, when we die, the real world is this one, not that one. So the training, the transformation of the journey in spiritual life is also a journey of uh, getting the things right. You said acting right, but here getting the, spirit, the, the real things right, which is what? The real world is inside, not outside. While if you say this to any normal person, they will say you, you lost it completely. You, you need to go to the mental health hospital, the closest one, you see. While in fact, the real reality is inside and not outside. We worry about the reality outside. And I'm the first one to, 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 to uh, fall into this temptation, you see. But in fact, the real world is inside. This is why the practice of contemplative prayer is inherent to uh, a, 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 spirit, a true spiritual life. And this practice, spending uh, two hours, say, two hours in the, in the day, uh, one and one and one, uh, uh, in, in contemplative prayer means that you are allowing this world to exist. It's like you take, a, you have a telescope at home and you spend two hours every day. So you end up by what? By knowing a lot about and contemplating a lot about the, the sky. Yes or no? Here you have a, a, a two hours telescope inside uh, facing the other side and therefore uh, it's um, so why I'm saying all this, it's because our understanding of union can sometimes be still very human, very human and not corresponding to the reality of, of union, uh, reality. When John of the Cross, when you open the spiritual canticle, what is he offering? When you open the, uh, the, the interior castle, what are they doing? They are offering you the telescope for the inner world. The interior castle um, is, 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 um, is the garden uh, offered to a Carmelite nun where she can move. Why? Because she, she has an enclosure. She cannot move. Her space is very limited, by the way. The Carmelite nun, her, her physical, external space is very limited, you know. Yes, the monastery can sometimes be a little bit big. The, the garden can sometimes be a little bit sizable. But, you know, sometimes in Spain and back then, the gardens were that huge. So when the nuns, are, when Teresa Vavila writes the, the interior castle, she's offering a telescope. She's offering a new mapping of an interior world and saying, OK, now you can move. You can you can uh, go for a, for a walk as we would do uh, no, in, a, in, a, in this beautiful garden. Um, and John of the Cross, when he writes the spiritual canticle, it's, it's incredible when you think about it. How did he do that? We, we never had something equivalent. Never equivalent. We have journeys, we have growth, we have ladders and so forth uh, in, in the tradition of, of explaining the, the journey of growth. But somebody who comes and explains to you in a very poetic way that sometimes if you are, as, if you speak Spanish, if your mother tongue is Spanish, you are lost completely in the, in, the, in the poetic side of the story and you forget the theology behind it. This is very common, by the way. Um, if your mother tongue is, is, is Spanish and you read the spiritual canticle, you, it's like you're drinking wine. You, 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 you're not paying attention anymore to what he's saying. You are taken by the extreme, the, 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 the powerful, um, uh, the, the, the power of the, the, the poetic uh, of his poems. I mean, the, the, the poetic power of, of, his, of his poems. It's, it's, it's incredible. The, the density, he says even, he says, when I explain it, I don't give it entirely. I just give a little glimpse and I leave you with the poem. So if, if you're not, if you don't speak Spanish as a mother tongue, which is my case, I'm, it's not my mother tongue, you don't enter in this drinking wine. 
uh, you, you don't understand the power that his poem had. Now, the poem, the spiritual canticle, takes you from A to Z. Takes you from the beginning when Jesus knocks at the door of your heart till union and, and a little bit inside of union, a little bit of celebration and, 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 and a deepened uh, union. What is he doing? He is, as I said earlier on, he's removing, opening the boot and he's showing you the inner reality. So he's giving you the telescope to see the garden inside. This is incredible. Never heard of before. He's talking about the spirit. Who can see the spirit? Nobody can see the spirit. By definition, the spirit cannot be seen, our spirit. And he shows us this garden where the spirit is, where the spirit is enjoying the, 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 the groom, Jesus. It's incredible because these things, you don't see them, but you believe them. You see, this book is our act of faith and our act of hope. And our act of love, this book, the contents of it, which is the gift of God. So he's describing to us an inner world. So when you say uh, you did the right thing, um, all this is my reaction to your, your expression. Uh, you, you did the right thing. No, you, you're the first movement, you did the right thing. So what is the right thing in the eyes of uh, somebody like John of the Cross? Uh, the right thing goes... I mean, it's it's fire. It's 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 invisible to the naked eye. It's not the outer world. It's inside, and it's real. It's more real than than the outer world. So, I think we might get a little bit obsessed. I'm not talking about you, uh, Hilda, or or Matteo, or others, or Francesca. We we could easily fall into a certain obsession about the uh, first movements. But I think we shouldn't lose sight from the, uh, the core of it, which is infinitely much more than just, than, than just a question of first movement or a question of uh, almost, almost becoming a moral question like moral theology, you know, the commandments and so forth. I think we, we need to think fire, fire, is, is alive. When you have a mass, you need to lit the candles first. When you go and pray in, the, in a chapel, uh, you put uh, a little candle and then you, you lit it. And when you look at the fire, it's alive. It's alive. That's God. And that's God in us. And that's the workings of God. So it's, it's not a, a neutral, cold, uh, polished uh, mechanics. Uh, it's 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 fire, you see. So, yeah. Sorry, I I I, I tried to um, avoid us falling into um, uh, just the first movement and forgetting what is at stake. Okay. So. Any, any, anybody wants to say something? Can I react to this? Of course, yeah. Um, because you're saying that after a soul, so doing something right afterwards, that there's these degrees of union, so there's a growth within that path. Is the soul then, is it again like the phase before? Is it God that is leading all of this? In the sense that, you know, you say sometimes like there's an effort of our part is one, but actually God is doing the 99 or the 100. Um, or you sometimes say like the little straw that you put on in order to keep this fire going. So it's not um, like what is the part of the, you know, the effort of the soul in that during that stage uh, so is it similar to what happens before or is there a different way of acting at that point it's different. or am i opening something that's no no well <laughs> look we are in it uh, but, but why not honoring the the, the questions uh, why do we want to stick uh... <clears throat> 
I, I, I will, I will um, if you don't mind, sh uh, share my um, thing there. So tell me, can you see? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the aspects I talked um, a little bit earlier on uh, um, about, sorry, I will cut for a second. I need to connect my pencil. So w one of the characteristics of, of union <clears throat> is Uh, is a direct access to Jesus. So if if we say that before uh, you have um, Jesus and you have the, the person here, before union, then after union, uh, this, this sort of distance or sort of opaque, uh, barrier between us uh, disappears. So you have direct access uh, to Jesus. Of course, it's very, very um, difficult to talk about such things in, in, in drawing. Now, another aspect. So here you have direct, direct access. One of the other aspects is the inner dynamics. And I'm alluding here <clears throat> to what you find in the book called The Fiery Prayer, Mary's, Mary's Fiery Prayer. And it is very much the following. Uh, you can find this book on, on Amazon. Um, I might if I remember, put the link under the video. Otherwise, please ask for the link. <clears throat> the fiery prayer of Our Lady, <clears throat> Mary. Mary, Mary, fiery, fiery, fiery prayer. Mary's fiery prayer. Now, <clears throat> in this uh, book, or in uh, I'm following St. Therese of the Child Jesus, one of the aspects of, of Therese, which is what? Which, in fact, is an explanation of prayer. And again, here, we're opening the boot and we're trying to see inside how um, it works. Usually, when we pray, this is very much linked to the end of purification, but also it's in, it is increased by the power of the Holy Spirit, the growth in, in the action of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Therese in the end of manuscript C explains to us prayer, draw me and we will run. She starts a first explanation and then she offers a second explanation of draw me and we will run. And then... Toward the end, completely the end of the book, Manuscript C, The Story of the Soul, she says that what Archimedes couldn't find because his search wasn't addressed to God, etc., uh, God showed it to all the saints, the great saints, Augustine, St. Dominic, St. Francis, and so forth. And then she will say something. She will talk about the... Uh, the lever and the fulcrum and a lifting a lifting power and a lifting story uh, there is a, a lifting the world no soulever le monde lifting the world sorry what was your question if if god helps helps the soul um to grow in love after yeah yeah, yeah 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 so there is there is this discovery that Therese undergoes and I think it's it's a it's typical characteristic of this growth uh, this discovery if you want 
it is linked to the act of oblation, to the grace uh, of the act of oblation. Uh, because in the act of oblation, she discover that any act, any of her acts, is not carrying a lifting power. Any of her acts doesn't carry in it this fundamental characteristic of the lifting power, which means attaining God. So she has a, a powerful clarity, a revelation, a grace, this 9th of June 1895, it's the Feast of the Blessed Trinity. She discovers that something more is needed. A little bit like I said when I was answering uh, Hilda, no? uh, she said, um, uh, to uh, to react in the, the right way. I said, yeah, but what is the right way? And uh, it's 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 an infinite thing. But inside of this infinite, there are there are there are um, huge shifts in quality. And 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 this major this is a major shift. What I'm trying to explain. <clears throat> so Therese discovers that her prayer. Her acts, her, as Hilda said, good reaction, is not enough. The, it doesn't have the, enough power in it, in it to reach God, to touch God and to have an effect. Which means the arrow of the act doesn't touch God and has like a firework effect on the world. Do you see what I'm drawing here? So the act doesn't reach that point here. Then therefore you touch God and therefore it has a, a firework effect on the world. God shows her and it is aligned with what John of the Cross says, but despite the fact that she read him, it wasn't clear enough. You know, uh, tell me what to do. Uh, after union, uh, tell me what to do. Is it automatic? Am I like a, a train on the railways and you push the train and the train will, 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 will run forever? Or there is something that I'm supposed to do? So I'm, I'm answering a little bit the, 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 this question. I know we are a little bit far from, from the course, but John of the Cross talks about union, so there's nothing wrong to open and talk a little bit about union. Otherwise, it's extremely boring uh, after a while. You see, so... <clears throat> This is what she discovers, that this, that her act is this arrow, and it's limited, and it doesn't touch God. This is my way of presenting it. So I'm talking about the very grace of the act of oblation, which then will transform completely the dynamics of her prayer, the, the dynamics of what she can do to God and to the church. You know, she entered to save souls and especially to pray for priests. No, this is the mission of, 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 of Therese. So she says, I need the lifting power of God. I need the lifting power of God in order to reach God. So I am leaning on God and I need the lifting power of God to reach God, which means to touch this point here. This is me talking. It's a, it's a diagram. It's a drawing to help, but uh, you, you can, you can uh, uh, visualize it or, or, or draw it in, a, in, a, in different ways. And of course, once you touch God, you have effects, you know, in the heart of the church, I will be love. So, <laughs> ripple effect or, or firework effect. So that's her discovery. I need to lean on God and I need the lifting power of the Holy Spirit in a fiery prayer to touch God. Because this is what we want. 
we want to touch God. We want to be in a relationship, in a living relationship, not me, pre me um, being there and him being elsewhere. And I'm not trying, and I'm, I can't reach him. And we're talking here about each act. This is why she says in the beginning of the act of oblation, in order to live in a constant act of love, in a perfect act of love, in a continuum. No, this is not, not, not like, yes, a little bit, and then we forget about it, and then we come back. So something could be done, yes. Now, when she will talk about the lever, fulcrum and the lever, it's the same thing. I, I, I just brought the fulcrum and the lever inside of the act of oblation. In this drawing. The first arrow is what she says in the beginning. Uh, all our acts, all our righteous acts, this is why I said, what is to, to, to reply correctly? Even if you have the first movement, fine, but you still can learn a lot. You can be, be on fire. So we need to move from union, non-fiery union, I'm answering your question. We need to move from non-fiery union to fiery union. This is why in John of the Cross, you have the moment of union in the spiritual canticle. Then you have a period of celebration. Then you have a period of intensification. Then you have the transformer, what we call traditionally transformative union, which is a fiery state. Which is what uh, you you find in the living flame, living flame. Now let us go back to what Therese says. Mm. So she says, the idea in my act, in any of my acts, is to lift the world to God. Remember what the priest does in the Mass, no? When the priest consecrates the bread and wine into Jesus' body and blood, the prayer starts, the real prayer starts. Jesus is there present, and the real prayer of the Church starts. It's Jesus himself present in the Eucharist, present in the person of the of the priest, who Jesus, who is now in showing us that he is caring for all humanity. So everybody is mentioned. The dead, saints, and the people on earth, the church and the world. Everybody is mentioned. Which means everybody is included in Jesus prayer then mysteriously mysteriously the priest will do something unheard of after having in persona Christi included all humanity in this host or hosts and who is now which is now Jesus' body. It's not anymore just uh, bread anymore. It's finished. It's it's now Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. So Jesus, the living Jesus, is there. After having included all humanity, this is why the prayer, which opens after the consecration of the Eucharist, is, is, is of utmost importance, and we need to understand what is happening. So the priest, in the person of Jesus, is including, when you pray for everybody, you include everybody and, and put them inside of Jesus. And then he will conclude this prayer with a, with a very important gesture. He included everybody inside of himself, Jesus, using the priest's words. And then Jesus will do something incredible. If, if the, the priest is, does it, but in fact, it's impossible for a human being to do it if it's not Jesus who does it, which is what? To elevate 
and introduce all this into the presence of the Father. With him, in him, to you, God Almighty Father, all glory in, in the world, etc. You see, sorry, because I, I, I know it in French, and still, after so many years, I, I remember rather the French form. Okay, so <clears throat> what is he doing? This is the accomplishment, the, 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 the full realization of prayer, which is what? Lifting the entire world, because he mentioned the church, the living church, the dead, the inner purgatory, the, the saints, the world, you know, your, your sons and daughters, wherever they are. He prays for them. People who are, went astray and he's praying for everybody. Everybody is included in this Jesus. And then mysteriously, Jesus, in the presence of the priest, will lift up himself, but it's not himself alone. It's himself carrying all humanity. This is why this moment is crucial in the Mass, in my eyes. Because it's the, the conclusion, but not conclusion going down, conclusion going up, of the consecration and of prayer and of everything. So, and he lifts. Can you lift the entire world? It's impossible. You don't have the strength to lift. So what do you need? You need an altar. You need the offering. Jesus himself who now contains everything. And you need the lifting power of Jesus' prayer, which is Holy Spirit in Jesus, both, both together, lift. No, when I will be um, lifted up, I will attract everybody. But now it's 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 happening in the mass. No, so he lifts and introduces everybody in the presence of the Lord. This liturgy, this prayer, this is prayer. There are no other forms to a certain extent of prayer, which is what an introduction in God. Where I am, I am outside of God, and I'm lifted up, and I'm introduced in God. Do you have any other form of prayer? This is the heart of prayer. So think about it. Now, this external liturgy is given to us because of baptism. We are all invited to exercise the lifting power of Jesus and participate into the Mass. This participation is of utmost importance. Because otherwise I went physically to the Mass, but I wasn't, the liturgy outside wasn't happening inside. The liturgy outside wasn't also happening inside. This is why we talk about participation of the faithful, because of their priesthood, the, the baptismal priesthood. We're not talking about the priest, we're talking about the baptismal priesthood. We are not ministers, we are, we are, we are baptized only, you see. But the baptized person has an immense power, has Jesus' power. So let us go back to the, to the drawing and see what could happen inside of the, the human being. So, <clears throat> so you should be able to see now the... Yes, perfect. So, you, you need an altar. Which, remember, in the case of Archimedes, is the fulcrum. The point on which you lean in order to push up. If this point is not God, I need all your attention, please. If this point is not God, you sink in under the weight of humanity. This is why only Christ, full of the Holy Spirit, giver of the Holy Spirit, is the stone. The stone is the altar. Huh? The priest, when he enters in the Mass, he kisses the, the altar because the altar represents Christ. Christ appears in different forms, appears in the altar, appears in the presence of the priest, appears in the body and bread, uh, in the body and blood of Jesus, 
and of course is is the entire assembly present priests and and faithful and all the the invisible ones no you have plenty of people invisible present at mass you, you, even if you have two persons in mass it's you are you are surrounded by um, 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 angels uh, and saints and people um, in purgatory okay so now the 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 priest here uh, who is who is um, a, a offering the uh, the, uh, the bread and and the wine he leans on his own divinity he leans the priest is jesus huh? not not that the priest is jesus it's in fact the real liturgy is jesus so only jesus can lift so if jesus is not god you cannot you, you will sink in under the weight of what you are lifting which is here uh this um a stone say for instance if you are using a, a lever uh, if you're lifting the soul so this is the world um the entire world church and world you're lifting it of course the drawing is just not just in moving the stone but lifting it completely so you you if if the leaning point you're leaning on which is the fulcrum you're not leaning on on god himself jesus the stone you cannot lift up because you will sink in. The second point here is the lever, the power of, of the lever, which is what? The fiery prayer of uh, the, the Holy Spirit. So in Jesus and in us, there is this power, the lifting power of the, pa the pattern and the chalice. Um, sorry, the chalice here. Sorry, it's... Uh, To the father introducing them into the bosom of the father the embrace of the father this is his head and this is his embrace so the lifting power here from from where it is here to inside of of it is the fiery prayer of jesus And when I say fiery, I'm alluding to the Holy Spirit. Now, this is happening. You can see it in the Mass happening in front of you. But it is important when we attend Mass, first the priest himself, then the faithful, and also the faithful, it is important to have I would say a reflection of this uh, liturgy inside of us. So, uh, say you have the um, the altar. Uh, the The priest here is uh, profile here, standing up and lifting um, the bread and uh, and and the chalice, Jesus and 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 his blood to the Father. So this is what we see, but I'm 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 looking at it, looking it at it from profile. So we are here. We are somewhere. So this is the altar. Huh? Uh, we are here, faithful. We are uh, kneeling uh, somewhere here, uh, praying. This exact movement here should exist in our heart inside of our heart this is what is happening whatever whoever is entrusted to us here in our inside of our heart needs to be lifted up so there is a reflection it's the image there is a reflection a correspondence between the external liturgy external liturgy the real it's it's real i'm not denying it of course uh, no no doubt about that external liturgy now we have inside here the uh what is it called the um, participation uh, 
participation, participation in virtue of the fact that we are baptized and being baptized, uh, we can uh, enact and use the uh, baptismal priesthood, hmm? baptismal priesthood. The, the Christian, any Christian baptized is not aware of his or her responsibility into creating this sort of equivalence. Now, I'm still answering your question. It can only really be fully realized, not only in union, in the, in, during union, but this is a stage inside of union, which is the what we call transformative union, or better said, the fiery state, which comes after. So the inner liturgy, the inner liturgy, should happen of course during the mass but it can happen 24 hours seven you're not supposed to do it only during the mass and then you're free of uh, of obligation no uh, we live with uh, one hour obligation uh, for many centuries uh, this is our understanding of christianity which is extremely poor uh, one hour obligation this is our this is uh, what we give to God, which is ridiculous. What we need to give is 24 hours seven obligation, and I don't like the word obligation, of course, which is what? Performing this inner liturgy that you, you can see here. Inside of our heart, and there is a sort of an image or, or a reflection of what happens when the priest lifts up um, uh, everybody. Now, automatically, says St. Therese of the Child Jesus, without us knowing, the Lord attaches people or puts it inside of us being a host, us becoming a host, an offering to God, puts inside of us, which is, this is the baptismal priesthood, puts inside of us people that we don't know, attaches them to us. It's mysterious and fine. Now, our job is to unite ourselves. How? With this lifting power. So the enormous advantage that union offers to us is not only the direct access to Jesus, but also the immense mission and capacity to perform constantly 24 hours 7 this inner liturgy so you see there is a lot to be done and we're not talking about a specific mission like i don't know evangelizing or doing this or doing that or no i'm talking about the common denominator of all vocations I'm leaning on john of the cross and and saint Therese of the child of jesus common denominator the, common, the vocation of that every any person can do any place 24 hours it, including, of course, the Mass par excellence, but also outside of that. So, lifting. So when you say Hail Mary, you are, in fact, uh, allowing this inner liturgy to work, because you say, pray for us sinners. So you are not using your own lifting power. You are using the Holy Spirit in Mary's lifting power, but Mary is alive in you, union. Union is union with Jesus, but union with Mary. You, 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 don't, you, you cannot be united to Jesus and not united with Mary. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Any, any question around, around this? Because, you know, I took time and I explained it. I did explain it in the past, but we have a capacity to draw here, which is um, good. Any does, questions? Yeah, please. Does this then become... Con is this then contemplation in that state? It's the same thing. Is this contemplation? Yes. This is action. This is fiery contemplation. This is action. But that is, is the con is. Yeah, contemplation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is contemplation. If you look at prayer of the heart, this is the contemplation of prayer of the heart. Yes, but it's yeah. 
we are in a completely different world if you want to talk about contemplation because before you've described how contemplation throughout St. John of the Cross's books also changes so I so this is then the yeah. higher state of correct correct the new meaning of contemplation in that state absolutely yes uh, this mm. you, are, you are correct um this is uh, uh, one of the final stages if not the final at least inside the final stage of contemplation absolutely it's a fiery contemplation it's a completely it's on a completely another realm of of anything that precedes it um but you see go, coming going back to you the questions all of you ask the question now what what shall we do what are we supposed to do and so forth uh, after union um salomon and non salomon and so forth if if there is we don't have received the grace of understanding that she can do and she should do and how it works and and especially this part no that that as i said to hilda no uh, reacted well and she this is one of the key points in in the act of oblation when she uh, when she says all our righteous acts this is for me the correct translation huh? no no justice is righteous act all our righteous act have stains in your eyes which means in in uh, in engineering uh, terms uh, you 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 reach this point and you cannot reach that point you are not touching god why because it doesn't have the lifting power of god you are the intermediate please i need all your attention here what is number one and number two? Number one and number two is God and God. While before, Therese had number one and number two, which are still human. This is why when you say reacted properly, no, uh, Hilda said no uh, uh, correctly, uh, reacted correctly could be uh, the black number one and two here, the, the one in black. While the revelation of a completely different quality and level and intensity of correct reaction is the red number one and number two, which is do not lean on yourself, do not lean on what you thought is right to, to be done, but lean, lean on Jesus, the stone, number one, and the lifting power of the, the fiery prayer, uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus, number two, and you, number two. Yes, please. But isn't that what St. John of the Cross, you know, says our pure act of faith, isn't that something you have to do already in the process of trying to reach union with Jesus? You are directed toward it, yes, with the pure act of faith. But are you doing this? Um, yes and no. I see what you mean. Um, because isn't that what actually transforms you? Is his help that comes in through the Holy Spirit because you're making that pure act? You're right. But I think we are here on a... On a comp the, the, the whole thing is more fiery. Mm. Uh, no, because here in the drawing, and I guess drawings always have their limitations, it looks very black and white, whereas probably it's, there's more nuance. Well, it, why not? It is black and white in the sense that I, am I leaning one on One can him? and one cannot. Like you either reach it with his help or not, or leaning on him or you don't, leaning on yourself. No, 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 no. It is black and white. Let me explain. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that you're not lifting only yourself. It is black and white. Why? There is a phase, you're right to underline it, which is the purification of faith. You want to reach the act of faith which touches God. You touched God, but you are still very far from what we're talking here. Uh, what we are talking here is much more advanced. In which sense? <clears throat> it's not about only you talk, touching God. 
which yes, is it is achieved on an individual per, uh, uh, level. But here, remember, it is a priesthood in the sense that it is yeah. a... Yeah, no, I understood that, I understood that. Oh, yeah, but let me give you an example. Let, you know, uh, you, you, you know, uh, you can feel down for tens of reasons. And you may accept it inside of your prayer, or you may say, no. I will, I will, I will say the Hail Mary, and I will offer myself until this sort of being absorbed and uh, and, and and wetted in 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 the human heavy uh, heaviness to be lifted a little bit like the the little bird she talks about, and then the little bird needs the the, the wings of 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 the eagle, uh, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. The the, the the, the lifting our arms, the, the Jesus lifting arms. <clears throat> You're not alone, and you played it in a completely different way, and you could have waited until your mood becomes better, but here you took your daily reality, you didn't question it, you didn't say, is this somebody, is this me, etc. You just said, okay, let me work on it. And then you work on it, until it could take an hour, it could take less, I don't know, until the fire goes back again. But what did you do? You probably served thousands of people, but all this impossible to know. Mm. See? So what I'm trying to say is that on an individual basis, yes, you well, you said there is a similarity between this uh, attaining this purity of the act of faith John of the Cross talking about, but it is only attained through the purification of the dark night of the spirit. There is a similarity, but yeah, that's what much I meant. more in the sense that you are carrying other people. There is a priesthood, there is a charity, there is a width of the of the shoulders where the person can carry much much more people, but mysteriously, not with your own power. Mysteriously. You moved from the the small arrow uh, uh, one two the small one to the to the to the red one because in fact it's more Jesus than 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 us that that's the discovery that uh, when Therese um, her sister says yeah but I'm not perfect I can't do this act as she said no your imperfection if it's accepted and offered then it's Com uh, combustible for the fire uh, it, it increases the fire so it's not out of a personal merit but it's out of an understanding that I can offer and then the fire takes it so here the lifting power is used properly uh, on a bigger scale I would say um, in, a, in, a, in a baptismal priesthood uh, form um, yeah I don't know if I explained myself I had understood that you needed to lean completely, you know, on God or in Mary in order to even, let's say, reach God so that God can then do his work in you. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning. Yes. But now, in this case... Okay, and that no, no, and I, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's that's a phase. That's an, a, a, mm -hmm. a a phase prior to this one. Yes, absolutely. Which is the the the, the purity of faith. Saint John of the Cross is uh, wants us to 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 attain, and in fact, we need to accept. We need to take on board Mary's faith for us. What I think is that it looks very similar, but I guess the effects are very different because you're in a different state. Yes, because let me say, when when you, you you are aiming for this purity of faith, in the end of the day, yes, you, you there is a shot, you can repeat that shot. Now you have access. I understand that. But here it's it's 
it's not a, it's not you're, you're not alone you you're you are invisibly unknowingly there are there are other people involved but uh, you will we will never know because this is uh, this is uh, the, the mystery you know it's god's business it's not ours and um not only that but the act of faith Yes, it has his dynamics and it uh, it achieves it and so forth. But I think that the dynamics of this other one is more of act of oblation. It's it's like offering myself. Mm-hmm. Now you might say, but uh, yes, but uh, we can do the other one in, in in a form of offering. Fine, fine. But I think here the the offering of ourselves is much more accentuated, and uh, because we are in a different phase. Yeah, and it's because we've been pur- because the soul has been purified at that point. Yeah, no, but when you do the act, when you at finally uh, can achieve that one short of act of faith, yes, then you are already uh, even purified then. But then you have a lot of things happening after. You have the visits of the Holy Spirit, the strengthening of the human being, then the spiritual marriage, which is not necessarily perceived at all. Then you have the uh, celebration then you have the increase then you have that moment where suddenly you become aware that there is a state that is active and not just there's something that couldn't that that is a, it's a form of like an engine a running engine or or a, or a, or a fire which is alive while before, I would say it was a little bit more static, if you want. Here, suddenly, it becomes in act and not just a fact that, yes, we can access Jesus, we are here with him and so forth. It's more alive in the sense that the fire is taking. Um, so there is a, a huge um, a leap in, in quality. Okay. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you for your question. So I'm sorry we we haven't um, uh, addressed or read anything, uh, but I think questions and answer are very important. So I hope whoever will watch the video will will be able to to benefit from from all this. At least it shows that there is a lot to expect. There is a lot to be done, and I hope also that this short uh, presentation of of the dynamics of of the mass. Uh, will also inspire um, um, many. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, never shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, and until next time.